We've got flags and banners, and if you mind your manners, we might even get to standards and what they represent. So just take my boy's hand, and we'll both try to understand how this vexillar logic podcast could be flagged for content. Flagged for What's up, Vexheads, and welcome to episode 11 of Flagged for Content. It's the only podcast, so nice they delayed it twice. Um, anyway, happy to finally be coming to you on today, Wednesday. Just a little delayed from where I wanted it, but uh, yeah. For those who don't follow us on social media, aren't in the Discord, etc., we are going to be putting these out on Tuesdays from now on, which is going to make it a lot easier for me more or less, and hopefully just as convenient, or more so for you. And I know today's Wednesday. I had a few things to do yesterday and didn't get the episode edited in time, so I do apologize for that. First things first, let's get our Instagram contest winner announced. That was at Evil Levco. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, so I'm going to spell it. But it's I-V-O-L-E-W-K-O. So yeah, congrats, Eva Levko, or however that's pronounced. Thanks for successfully spotting the flag of the Orkney Islands. And speaking of flags, obviously we talk about a few of them today, one of them being Missouri. And we talk a little bit about these 37 stars that are in the middle. And I couldn't figure out why, nothing in my research pointed to why. It's Brandon and I are both dum-dums. And the 37 stars that are in the middle of the Missouri seal are the 24 that are the ones you're thinking of that are at the top of it, plus the ones that are on the U.S. shield. So that's how we get to 37. It's not, you know, it's not that complicated, but we were looking at a pretty small version of it and didn't see that. So also, I talk at the beginning and a couple times about getting to the Florida flag, which I think I even say spoiler. Well, here's an early spoiler. We don't get to the Florida flag. <laughs> I had looked up some stuff on it and intended to do it today, or at least thought of it was a possibility. But in the end, we ran short on time, and I will get to that one later. And I don't think there's any more housekeeping I need to get out of the way. Just the usual stuff. So yeah, go follow us at flagged the number four content on our social media. Go to flagged.rocks. You can see there's a couple fundraisers in there as well. And yeah, thanks for continuing to support the show. I think episode 11 is like, we're the longest running English language flag podcast now. So, whoopee! Anyway, without further, further ado, let's go ahead and get into the episode. We have got an amazing guest for you guys this week. You know him from the back row of every group photo he's ever been in. You know him from hanging out in our very Discord that you should hang out in as well. And you know him for a third thing. It's Brandon Anderson. What's up, Yay. Brandon? <laughs> hey, doing good. How are you, Andy? I'm doing good, man. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah. I mean, we've we've had some interactions together. We like you said, or like I said, you hang out in the discord we've had some good chats in there and we've played some jackbox games i know in the past and yep. uh, i think this is our probably our first face-to-face -face. i like, think oh, this that's is what andy looks like yeah yeah same <laughs> i was gonna say yeah just know the the voice usually which is yes. all the listeners will get to know mostly but that's fine um yeah man so how's you had a day off today right yes day but off from normally work, uh, second day in a row yeah but the day that you had off today was from what job exactly? So uh, people are going to react in a couple of different ways, I would imagine. Uh, I work at the Denver International Airport. Like when I say those words, like what comes to mind like right away? Lucifer, for sure. Lucifer, yep. I see Lucifer every day on my way into work. That's the that, murals. Uh, yeah, the murals. Those are <laughs> covered by construction right now. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, I do work for an airline. Uh, rhymes with Schmelzmest Schmerlines. <laughs> I did that right when Andy was taking a <laughs> drink <laughs> of his delicious beverage there. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you had another sense. I thought I had time. Um, Bad yeah, timing so, on my part. <laughs> Schmouth, Schmouth, Schmouth. Schmouth West, Schmerlines. Yeah, yeah, that one. 
Yeah, um, which I yeah. think uh, I must have to pause and say, yeah, the, the views and opinions of Brandon J. Anderson are his own and not reflective of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. those disclaimers <laughs> like, yeah, I work oh, for yeah. Southwest. It's uh, I've been working for them for almost 14 years. And yeah. Nice. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, I was going to do my own disclaimer uh, at the top of this episode and say that this whole episode itself is not an ad. <laughs> we are going to be talking about a company, obviously, that does some cool things with flags, to be totally honest, and should be praised for such, you know, at least that thing. And uh, yeah, not an ad, but we are going to go into, you know, some kind of corporate flag fusion today. Anyway, so yeah, in your capacity with said airline, uh, what, like, what's the overlap with flags? Like, what's your interest in, or their interest, I guess, in this subject matter? So uh, starting in... Um... So like uh, late 80s into the 90s, um, Southwest Airlines was doing specialty aircraft, different branding. The first of which is the, I think, 1988, the, the full. You might remember uh, if you've ever seen, gone to the airport, uh, seen Southwest Airlines. So you say that doesn't match any of the other ones. It's like a specialty aircraft. So uh, airplanes, when it comes to like a paint job of an airplane, uh, that is what is known as, uh, I guess, in the, in the industry as a livery. Uh, that's one of those words that you learn or you probably see in print before you hear it uh, uh, spoken out loud. So I still have coworkers that call it the livery. It's like, oh, like, did you see the new livery of the plane? And like, no, it's livery. I'm sorry. I, like, <laughs> I honestly, I'm glad you're saying it because I'm one of those that's only seen it written. I think I would have said livery. Wait, is that right? Livery is right. Okay, livery is correct. Okay. I had to I go to the... I already couldn't remember. <laughs> there's a YouTube video that was like, real life examples of the use of the word livery and it's like mo mostly british it's kind of funny um merriam webster dictionary i actually brought this up uh, my favorite definition for it was oh i thought you so were li literally is livery livery is synonymous for like uniform or uh design um one of the definitions Mary Webster said it's chiefly British definition of an identifying design as on a vehicle that designates ownership. So basically, when you look outside the window of the airport, like, oh, that's a United plane. I know that because of its livery. Uh, that's a Spirit Airlines. That's Southwest Airlines. That's American. But the specialty livery in the Southwest Airlines fleet, we have about a dozen planes that are of the uh, United States state flags. Yeah. And uh, is... one... Very cool. Sorry, go on. Yeah, there is one uh, plane, the most recent one, uh, deb debuted last year. That is the American flag. That aircraft is called Freedom One, and it's uh, the stars and stripes that we know and love, or have opinions about. <laughs> <laughs> I think the <laughs> stars and stripes are just you know aesthetically tacky, but yes, you know. <laughs> hey, you're preaching in the choir here, but yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, that's, yeah. so that's the most recent one. That's the most recent one. That's uh, 2021. That one debuted. That was the 50th anniversary of Southwest Airlines. Uh, they started in 1971. It was kind of like a here's to 50 years, 50 states. Okay. okay. I'm not sure if the end game is to have uh, 50 different planes. Uh, there are a dozen right now, um, but it's uh, the markets that Southwest serves. It's kind of a celebration. Uh, Southwest is a Texas airline. So the first one in 1990 was uh, the Texas flag put onto a plane. Right. And that's called a Lone Star One. It's not even called Texas One. It's like, you know, Texas will do that. No, I like yeah. that. Lone Star One. That's that's very cool. That's um part of well, actually, I was going to, and now might be a good time to do it to kind of like naturally work it in, but I was going to quiz you on if you knew all of them off the top of your head. <laughs> without checking I, your notes. I have the notes in front of me, I'm gonna put them down. So Yeah, yep, cheating. face down, <laughs> pencils down. <laughs> You can quiz me in the order that of the which right. they debuted. That's going to be. Oh yeah, I actually yeah. I have that written down in in my notes as well. So if you if you want to start in the order, you already said the first one. Uh, Lone Star One. That was That's Lone the Star Texas One flag. I believe the next one was Phoenix. Not Phoenix. I always well, we fly city to city, so I have a bad habit of saying the city instead of the state. So Arizona One. Yep. Ninety four. Um, Nineteen ninety four. Believe. What is number three? California. California one. California one and 95. Bear on it. Yep. Uh, I think Nevada was next. 
Correct, 99. 99. Do they have a special name for that one, or is it just uh, That Nevada one's just one? called Nevada One. Ne- okay. Nevada, Nevada. Maybe like Silver State One or something, I don't know. Yeah. And there are specialty aircraft that are uh, apart from just the flag ones. There's uh, some we'll go over if we have time. A little bit uh, later. We just, don't. Yeah. It's whatever. <laughs> we don't, yeah. <laughs> they don't have flags on them, who cares? <laughs> All right, so we're up to what? Uh, we're up to Nevada in '99. Um, 2000 ish. That would have been some of the older ones. Illinois one is in there somewhere. Maybe I'm skipping a couple. Oh, I didn't write that one down, so you might be right on that one. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. The next one I have written down is different. It might be. Oh, New Mexico was one of the. Yeah. New... Yes, New Mexico. That's the next one that I have in my notes, being 2000, the year 2000. In the year 2000, in the year 2000. <laughs> Perfect. Keeping that in for sure. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, Nevada was 99, then New Mexico New Mexico, was 2000, right uh, that, no, 2000, 2000, they do it every couple of years or so. Uh, there's no real schedule for it. The next one is uh, until 2005. I don't know if that 2005, helps. 2005. Or... I started in 2009, so I don't rem- remember those planes except for them already have been there. They do it usually off of the big bases, big stations. So um, we have Phoenix, we have Vegas, um, California, uh, East Coast, Baltimore. Is it Maryland one? Is that the it next is Maryland one, one in 05. One? Next one's in 08. 08 would be, that's the Illinois one. Yep. Okay. My hint was going to be like, think who was elected in 08. Uh, next one's 2010. <laughs> I wonder if that correlates. I wonder if they did that on purpose. That's I'm probably a, suck yeah. up to the president. Yeah. Uh, 2010 ish. Yeah. Would have been I'm trying to think of that. It was the, the one that I remember debuting is Florida. Is that the Florida one? Mm hmm. Um, I did two years on the ramp and then went up to operations. So at the airport, I'm the guy that. Um, does weight and balance pilot paperwork. I'm also the guy that's like, A1 through 15, come on down. So Right on. Not quite customer service, but yeah. still inside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 20, what's the year of the next one? So various sources. <laughs> the This thing, this website I'm on says 2010, but in my notes I had it as 2012. And the last one was also in 2010. I don't know if they would do two in a year or not, but. Because I know Colorado is 2012 for sure. Okay, then it's, yeah, 2012. That's 2012, Colorado. Colorado one. one. Yep. How many is that? You got three left. Three left. So the, the the most recent three. Yeah, next one is 2015. 2015 would be, two, that's not Louisiana. That's the most recent state one, I believe. Uh, Missouri. Missouri won the Bears. Yes, sir. Then there's one in 2016. 2016 is Tennessee one. That's your favorite. Yep. I have some fun, fa- fun facts about the Tennessee one, I guess, that I learned like this morning. Oh, let's go into those um, after you name this last one. Sure thing. Last one is Louisiana one, which there looks like we call that the French fry plane. I mean, that's not the official name. It looks like so the, the way they did the paint job, the nest that the baby birds are in at the bottom looks like a pile of French fries. I see it now. On, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did not see it. French it fry at- one. Yeah. At first. Yep. Yeah, French fry one. That makes total sense. Um, all right. Yeah. So wait, you wanted to go back to Tennessee one. What specifically about that one? Or is that just uh, for me? <laughs> a couple of fun facts. It's actually very uh, recent. So I remember a couple of days in the discord, I took a screenshot of our uh, cameras at work. I'm like, hey, look what's visiting us today. And it was a picture of Tennessee one. Yes. What, yeah. What I, what I didn't know is that it is the second Tennessee one. Um, So as the aircraft go out of service and get replaced by newer aircraft in our fleet, they will repaint uh, some of the like older liveries onto the newer planes. Uh, This is the first one to be done on an 800 series of the flag planes. So Freedom One was the first one uh, last year. This one is brand new paint job as of September 2022, which is where and when we are recording this. So, yeah, whoa! So that's very recent and from, very recent. Yeah, from what I understand um, too, like these bad boys take a while to paint. Like, it's a little easier probably to paint the Tennessee one 
than it is like the Florida one for reasons that spoiler alert oh, we're gonna go into so much going on in the Florida flag yeah the Florida one is nuts yeah like I said it's not even a spoiler at this point you knew it was gonna happen it had to at some point um <laughs> but yeah like they, I read where it's like they have to it costs them anywhere from fifty to three hundred thousand as fifty thousand to three hundred thousand dollars be nice if they could do it for 50 bucks but um and it says like the the ones with the more intricate designs and all that are just like more labor intensive time intensive and therefore more expensive and yeah like i was reading and it said they they have to paint uh you know say the red or whatever on a particular plane and then wait for all of that to dry before they even start you know peeling off the <laughs> painter's tape and there's a lot of taping there's a lot of yeah yeah, and getting, the, new, getting the blue on or whatever yes. at that point. Yeah, yeah. no, these planes, I, I was super glad. Well, one, glad that you're in the Discord, everyone who's listening. You should also join the Discord to have fun conversations like this. But yeah, when you posted these, it's like I knew I it's like I know he works at an airport. I had no idea that these existed. And I've flown Southwest before. Uh, not a whole ton. Like you said, there is a Tennessee one, so they do have service in the state, but not really out of Chattanooga where I'm at, so yeah. The only Tennessee we we do Memphis and uh, Nashville now, I think currently. So we haven't mm-hmm. gone further east as of yet. Um, we're always expanding. Like they opened a couple new uh, Colorado airports this year for like seasonal ski service, and so like the airports we choose, I don't know who's in charge of it. <laughs> like we're always saying, like <laughs> you know, like. I have friends from like uh, all over the country. Like, why? Are, when are you going to go to here? Where are you going to go there? I'm like, I don't know. The, the Dakotas are going to be in your future soon. I'm. I don't know. I don't have a say in that. Sorry. It's up to <laughs> Mister Southwest. Yeah, Mister yeah. Southwest. He controls everything. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. No. The, these planes are awesome. I love that. Like, I think like to me and to a lot of the listeners, these are going to be very cool to look at. And I'll I'll put the link in the show notes. But mostly just because. If you're listening to the show, you probably love flags or you love the guest or whatever. In this case, both. Um, It's cool to me that like flags are kind of becoming more mainstream now, I think. I don't know if that's I mean, like you said, the first one of these was in 90, what, 94 or something. Uh, 1990 was Texas. Oh, 90 was was. um, They had a couple of planes before that. There was a Shamu plane for uh, SeaWorld. Um, right. There's been other planes over the years. Uh, NBA, they call it, called it Slam Dunk One. Um, nice. It was a big like uh, ball and net kind of thing. Um, yeah, there are literal shoes called Air Force Ones, but I guess that was already taken like yeah. twice over, so they couldn't quite do that. But yeah, no, it's just interesting to me. I I think like flags are becoming a little bit more mainstream and a more uh, sought after. I'm seeing more and more just from personal experience, Tennessee flags, um, just like around the neighborhood that I live in. I mean, even like on the drive to the store, like houses that you that didn't even used to have an American flag. Now they have either just a Tennessee or both. And uh, I think like, you know, I don't know if this, you know, causation versus correlation, whatever, but it's very cool to me to see these kind of getting some, some, some more eyes on them and stuff. Especially for that, Tennessee personally. <laughs> absolutely. And uh, part of that is, probably due to branding because i live in colorado that's a, another one that has one of those very you know recognizable flags i'd put that up where with like uh, new mexico um california is pretty re- recognizable but you know like the branding of the colorado flag you can stick that on any person piece of merchandise and yeah i've se- i've seen that influx in the last <laughs> decade or so uh similarly they that just colorado flags are just everywhere coloradans or coloradoans depending on who you talk to uh, really love the Colorado state flag. And I don't blame them. Like one yeah. of the first things I did. So I've been to, I've been to Colorado once it was for a like bachelor party weekend thing, like, you know, long weekend type thing. Um, and my friend lives in Denver. So we stay there for a night and like, we went to like Walgreens to get beer. And I remember the first thing that I wanted to do, I saw like shirts that like, not even like nice fitting shirts, but just like tourist t-shirts that had like the Colorado flag with like mountains overlaid, kind of like your license plate ish. Um, or no, wait, your license plate's different. Never mind. It's not got the, anyway, it's got mountain shapes, but it's no, got mountains. There's no red sea as of yet. I'm sure that would be the next redesign in the next like 10 years or so. Yeah, no, it's this coming. was, this was like a hybrid. It was like the Colorado flag with kind of the mountains from the license plate along the bottom, like blue bit. And, uh, that was like the first thing that I bought in Colorado, I think. 
before I buy. And there's a lot of fun things you can buy in Colorado. But the first thing that I bought was that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely a marketable, like good, like branding shirt. And, you know, if I had thought things through a little bit more, I would have had you on for an episode where we were just talking branding flags and we could have called it Brandon with Brandon. <laughs> branding with Brandon. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So that Colorado shirt that you bought, did it look uh, like this one at all? This is uh, what's available right now today at the Denver Airport at one of these shops that's uh, on the concourse there. Um, I wanted to show you this one specifically on this episode because it looks like the Colorado slash Arizona flag with Dude, those rays yeah. coming off. And that is confusing and misleading. And <laughs> It looks very cool. The one I yeah. got was not nearly as cool as this, but... Yeah, dude, I would fly to Denver just to get that. Or that right. shirt that you had on in that other pick with the plane on it. Oh, my God. Y'all, yep, get in our Discord. Our... Yeah. <laughs> uh, that shirt that Andy is talking about is uh, one of the local culture committee shirts. Uh, the mix of the Colorado flag um, with the silhouette of Denver International Airport. Um, we call them circus tents. That's the term of endearment, I guess. Um, yeah. And a, and a plane uh, flying through. Kind yeah. of a cool design. I, f I forget. It's one of our local employees that designed it and um, did it just for, it was like a fundraiser for the culture committee. I want that one bad. If, if they yeah, ever That come one is up. out of print. I keep on checking back. I know. I, <laughs> I know. It's too bad. But all right. Well, let's move into some of the off of the planes and into kind of the flags themselves. Actually, I'll say this. The first one that I've got for you is not actually one that's on any of your liveries. But I will, you listen to the show, and uh, you I know do. how we do it here. So yes. the first one that I give you will be sight unseen, and uh, I will just give you the design, and you tell me what it is. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. So this flag is a blue field with a white zigzag pattern forming two red triangles on the bottom. Within the blue on top, a yellow circle is added near the center. <laughs> any idea on that one roundabout way of uh describing the colorado flag right hold it's on not no zigzags that's what zigzag is it misleading because like there are some weird um placement of the where the seamstress of the flag would like so i like there's too many lines no it's not colorado flag so zigzag zigzag blue triangles red yeah so picture blue on the top <laughs> zigzag that kind of makes like an m oh i it's know this flag now okay. white fimbriated yeah i what thought i was going to be looking at the flag and then describing it and it was the exact opposite that's later <laughs> okay that's later <laughs> got it uh that is the flag of the city of denver not just the city but also the county of denver city and county of denver don't worry i won't i won't mark you wrong for that one <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it's the one that i just sent you in uh in our discord although i probably didn't need to you probably see this one a lot actually i did want to ask you do you see this one a lot as a denver resident because as a sorry as a um as someone who lives in a town without a cool flag i almost never see it and i wonder if that's more it's ugly so we don't fly it anywhere or what like do, do you see this one a lot i uh you can only see this in a couple of places um it the flag is too cool to not be used i don't know why it's not used more uh, um, it's uh, complementary to the Colorado state flag, you know, a similar uh, color scheme, white stripe design. Yeah, I, wish I, I, I think saw it, it more. Yeah. I think exactly the same color scheme. I couldn't swear to that with the, you know, the yeah. Pantone and all that. But uh, I, my gut tells me that it's the exact same red, white, blue and yellow. Or I think it's uh, what do they call it? Crimson red and like old navy blue, whatever. What like what are the paint strips when you go to Home Depot? Like what is going to say there? I think it's yeah, I don't know. Golden yellow. Should ask Nick, who was on uh, episode one and five or whatever. He works with paint. <laughs> He'd know this shit. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but no, yeah, I I think and it's I think generally agreed upon that Denver has one of the cooler U.S. city flags in I was going to say in the world, but in the U.S. Um, just by virtue of I mean, several things to me, it it follows pretty much, well, it follows exactly the like NAVA guidelines on good flag design, for one. It utilizes three or fewer colors. We're not counting the white. I don't even know if we're supposed to count the gold. I tend to. 
and it's got a simplistic design that like a elementary schooler could recreate and it's i don't know it's easily mass producible it's it's marketable like it's brandable as we were talking about this one really to me is, is very perfect cool. design it's very yeah straight and to the point yeah it's striking but you don't see it anywhere last time i saw it was painted like haphazardly on a back of a food truck it was like selling uh, green chili burritos or something but yeah makes sense even like the the wikipedia page for it is like one there's like only five sentences on it and two the uh the picture that they have that isn't just like a jpeg of you know like a graphic representation of it is from 1994 <laughs> and maybe you know, they used not... to fly it more but they don't it's possible it's not really flown um there is a on the way to the airport you have to drive on pena boulevard and it overlooks what is called gateway park they used to fly it at there. There's uh, six flagpoles, uh, one on uh, a set of three on each side. So, um, I think you're just talking about a Six Flags. Six Flags. No, <laughs> they actually rebranded Elitches recently too. Yes, it's ah, not okay. a Six Flags anymore. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of a. Uh, I think Gateway Park was meant to be like where Aurora meets Denver, because um, if you look at a map. Um, of the like city of Denver city limits, you're like, what in the gerrymandering is this? Like, uh, uh <laughs> the Denver Here airport is its own. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. The yes. airport is a peninsula up to the northeast of like it has to go through Aurora to get there to like continue to be Denver. It makes sense. But anyway, this uh, intersection I'm talking about has uh, three. I'll, I'll see if I can get a picture of it. Um, maybe tomorrow on my way to work and. Send that. Maybe you can put it in the show notes. I was going to uh, say, yeah, the show doesn't go till yeah. uh, Tuesday today. It's like <laughs> but, a, yeah. two pairs of three really prominent uh, flagpoles. Mm. Um, they used to fly. It was on one side. It was a Colorado flag, American flag, Denver flag. <laughs> and on the other side is Colorado flag, American flag, Aurora flag, the city of Aurora. Oh, OK. Makes kind sense. Kind of this uh, gold star on a white field. A lot of text. It's not really the my favorite flag but uh, okay i'm thinking of a different one i thought you were talking about a really cool one but yeah it's, it's an okay one. one it's yeah. it's all right aurora flags are fine it's it's fine it's yeah fine. it's fine S speaking <laughs> speaking of reviews of flags though um so nava of which i'm a part the north american vexillological association nailed it first try um they did a review of like 150 u.s city flags and denver got third behind dc and chicago which to me makes complete sense dc and chicago are the ones that like you see the most like i've even seen the chicago one the chicago one they integrate into their like uh architecture and uh um like design in the city right it's like the two rivers or yeah, yeah yeah and the dc one is very cool too it, the dc one's like very similar to the chicago one it's like you know a series of stripes and stars you know they have different numbers of points and things like that but yeah denver got third and i think that's probably correct that's probably where i would put it it is one of my more favorites it's i don't know why i have like a little problem with like the symmetry i like things to be like shifted to the hoist side or <laughs> this or that or whatever this but, is perfectly symmetrical which is yeah it's you know very de yeah. de divisive or yeah it really splits the room yeah i mean literally <laughs> yeah um but so there's a reason that it is in the min in the middle though and i'll go over that uh the color yellow symbolizes gold in the state's hills the red is the colored earth to which the word colorado refers uh the circle centered position symbolizes both denver's central location within the state and actually no just yeah the central location within the state uh and then the white zigzag symbol symbolizes Colorado's Native American heritage. So it's like kind of like a almost mock up of some of those like designs you see from uh you know natives out west and everything. And uh yeah, that's pretty much all the information I I had on it. I dug a little bit deeper on um crwflags.com, which is a good site I like to use for that, but they didn't really have a whole lot that like other sources didn't have just that the yellow circle symbolizes the golden hills and the sun the yeah, blue it does say the blue field in which the sun rides is for colorado's unmatched skies i know you guys get like on average a lot more sun than most states they do Did say uh, think, but... 300 sunny days a year is yeah. kind of what they say on average so yeah 
And then the, yeah, the white jagged line is indicative of the wealth of silver in the hills and symbolic of the, this says Indian background in the state's history. Yep. We I'd almost say it like snow capped mountains, but that's yep. just simpleton speaking here. huh? Yeah. And then do you know, like, so the sons of the American revolution sponsored a contest with a $25 prize for the winning entry. Uh, and this was in 1926, according to my notes. And the funny thing about $25 in 1926 is, do you know how much that is now? Uh, I would guess close to like 500 maybe. Yeah, in a that, little less. Realm? It's a good yep. Colorado number. 420 It is <laughs> Not $420. That <laughs> yep. So more or less, <laughs> the Denver flag uh, was designed in 1926. Yeah, uh, it was a contest Sons of the American Revolution held. And you won 25 bucks, which is now 420 bucks. So, you know, don't spend it all in one place. But I thought that was like a cool, like a little, I don't know, historical symmetry almost, you know, things repeating in, in their own way. Yes. Anyway, yeah. So that's the Denver flag. I, I really like it. I think it's yep. a very cool city flag as far as U.S. city flags can get pretty fucking terrible. And this is a welcome exception of that. So I really hope they use it more in the future and like. Yeah, the red uh, triangles also kind of invokes like Red Rocks. You know, Red Rocks is in Denver, that music uh, amphitheater, world famous. Yeah, yeah, who, absolutely. Who knows? Who knows? All right, so we'll go ahead and move off of that one and into one that's like, you know, still close to home, but a little bit more broad. I have just sent you this in Zoom. Would you like to explain it? Yes, let's see if I can get my Vex terms correct here. Um, yeah. <laughs> you better. Uh, we have a blue field. The blue field is, shall we say, trisected. Hold on. It's uh, split in two, but in thirds. Okay, how do I want to say this? There's, <laughs> there's a stripe that goes through the middle of the flag and divides the flag into three. So it's blue, white, blue. Um, closer to the hoist side, we have a red circle. The circle is incomplete into, uh, there is a wedge taken out of it. On the fly side, we call it the fly side, the flip, flippity flap side of the flag. Um, inside of the red circle is a solid yellow or gold circle that is the same width as the one third of the flag white stripe that it sits in. Very well said. Description complete. <laughs> and. Do you have any, like, any, you know, is there any possible way you can try and figure out this flag? I see it every day in so many places. It is the state, the state of Colorado, and I'm sure people not in Colorado would still see this. Like, oh, you can see somebody from Colorado just representing. But, yeah, yeah. State, of, state of Colorado. Yes, this is indeed the Colorado flag. We're finally there. We're there. And, yeah, honestly, I mean, especially looking at it next to the Denver flag, I'm pretty sure those are the same exact colors. Let me scroll up. Yep, those are... The yellow may be a little... No, the yellow's the same. I'd say it's the same color scheme, exactly. Honestly, the yellow even looks to be the same size, although it's hard to tell when the image is, you know... Like oh, this, yeah, yeah. With the yeah. formatting. It seems like uh, they definitely took, took the Colorado design and kind of ran with it for Denver. But, yeah, do you know any of the, the history of the Colorado flags? Obviously, I do, and I'll go into it, but is there anything that you know about it? or? Um, I know that this flag's current design was designed on, I don't want to say on accident, like without the knowledge that there was already a state flag in existence and that the people who designed it were like, we don't have a Colorado state flag, let's design one. So is it something along those lines? I don't know it's, all the all the nitty gritty details there. Yeah, no, it's something along those lines. It's interesting. So Colorado joins the Union in 1876. The Centennial State. That's 100 years after the Union. Which is another thing that the C stands for, incidentally. Oh, okay. Centennial, yeah. Uh, oh, good. I got one over on you. And, uh, <laughs> and um, no, that is real. And there was an unofficial banner consisting just of the state seal on a blue background, which... If you've looked at U.S. state flags, you'll recognize that as the flag of like half the states. Everything has a blue background. Yes. <laughs> on a blue background. And so beginning and then in that year, in 1876, it kind of used that unofficially. It was never like codified or, or whatever, anything like that. Um, and they didn't have an official flag until 1907 
when there was a design that kind of brought in parts of the state seal but with the state motto which is nil sine numine do you know that one that's latin for i don't know there's gold in them there hills i don't know oh man that'd be better no it's it's like nothing without providence okay and uh it was not super popular because again it, it looked like any other it looked like the new york flag the you know kansas well the kansas every other flag kansas yeah. in big letters but yeah uh and so yes you're you're like part you're partially correct on that the in this case i know the denver one was the sons of the american revolution this was the dar daughters of the american revolution but they held a a design contest i guess in 1910 and they were unaware that there had been a flag adopted three years earlier which I don't know how you're unaware that there's been a flag adopted three years earlier. They didn't post it on the Twitter. I was going to say, they probably didn't put it on the social meds. And it probably was just like, in all honesty, it was probably just so ugly that like nobody wanted to fly it, which is kind of the case here in Chattanooga. Like nobody flies our Chattanooga flag because same reason. So <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they had one, but nobody was flying it. So the DAR was like, well, screw it. We'll do a competition and we'll, you know, bring it, you know, all entries welcome kind of thing. And this is 1910. There's a lot of this, like, what the Denver one was 1926. I think you have, like, in the first, the, I don't know, like, the first quarter of the 1900s, there's a lot of flag redesigning going on, which we'll go into another one later. But, and so they, yeah, they hold this competition. There's one that, quote unquote, wins. And it looks like, one, shit, and two, this, <laughs> that I am sending you now. So that's the first one, right? Or That's hold on, the but, one that the DAR proposed. To I come. have not uh, seen this one. I've seen the, the blue background one with the seal. This one is... The one stripes. I just sent you is the one they were trying to replace. That's the first one, okay. And but that they didn't know they were replacing. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> hey, we don't have one. We're going to do one. Yeah, so it's the state seal within a circle, yeah. kind of like embroidered. Is that stars or is it just... Looks like gold it's cord six, going around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. I don't know. And then six stars, which I'm not really sure what the significance of that is. Don't know. Uh, couldn't find that. There's Nothing not a whole lot mind. of. Yeah. There's not a whole lot on it since it never got adopted or whatever. So you know, looking you're, at the state seal now, it almost looks like the Denver flag in the middle that during the uh, in the middle where that mountain part is without the golden. Oh sun. yeah. No, I could yeah, definitely kind of see that, that. that. The zigzag mountains, except yeah. it's completely reversed. Never mind. It doesn't look anything like the Denver flag. Nope. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, that but the opposite. And then it's got the all-knowing eye, which like has, you know, come back into vogue with conspiracy. It's the eye from the money. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so DAR like held a whole competition. Like they, they came up with this red, white, red tricolor, like, you know, uh, like in fesses, like vertical or uh, horizontally flag. And they were like, all right, cool. This is the one that won. They presented it to the, uh, one of the state senators and ultimately the government was like, no, we, nope, <laughs> we already have one. You didn't know that? You didn't know we already had one? Because we do. <laughs> and it's, we like it better than this. So we're so, not using this. It was ultimately rejected. Quick question on the sidebar here. Um, red, white, red, when we think of like tricolored European flags, uh, does that a specific country? So this would be Austria. It'd Austria. be a different red. So it's like Austria, Austria flag with the state of Colorado seal in the middle. Yeah, Best actually, that's that. yeah. No, that's super helpful for listeners, too, because, like, honestly, I, I bet a lot of the listeners know the Austrian flag. Probably don't know this one. I mean, they'd have no reason to. So. I've never seen it, and I'm from Colorado, so yeah. there you go. Yeah, again, no reason. And, uh, yeah, so it, it ultimately just it was super unpopular. Nobody liked it. And then a new design was submitted, I think, the same year with the horizontal, like, the horizontal stripes that we now, you know, know and love of blue with the white in the middle and a red sea and a gold disc in the middle, slightly toward the hoist side. But the thing was, it was a very small, it was a tiny little baby <laughs> red sea with a little baby sun. Now in this it. one, I know you're about bad. to post it. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's not, it's not overall, it's not bad as far as flag design goes. It still manages to follow all the rules. It, you know, the sea, I'm not counting that as writing on a flag. That's its own thing. It's a design at this point. And yeah, I don't overall hate that, but they, 
I, at some point decided to, let's see, I think I have that in my notes, actually. I want to say I have a, no, that's probably the wrong one. One of the first, like, prototypes, like, in fabric of the Colorado, Colorado flag. The C Ooh. is a little bit bigger. Let me copy and paste this. This is from the Denver Public Library website. See so, yeah, how the C is just a little bit bigger on this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But, like, the gold still doesn't take up quite all the yeah. white part. It's got, like, well, yeah, no, it does. There's a it's white stripe like a white within, around yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is different. That is pretty cool. But yeah, like, like for a while, like, after 1911, like, there just was no official, like, the official rule stated, like, that, yeah, it has to be blue, white, blue, red sea with a, you know, golden disc in the middle. But they didn't really specify, like, sizes and things like that. And so it wasn't until 19, I think, 64 that the, yeah, the Colorado legislature dictated the diameter of the gold disc be equal to the center white stripe. So 1964, it was finally standardized. And even before that, in 1929 is when they standardized the colors to be the exact same red. Well, white is universal, like pretty much on flags, unless it's yep. a meme or whatever, you know. Make it eggshell um, or off white. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> beige, whatever. Not too many that do that. Like Delaware's is weird, but anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, like the blue and the red are exactly the same as are on the U.S. flag. So they codified that into law in 1929 because before then they had people doing all kinds of wild shit with it, putting the sea all over the place, doing different blues and reds, like all this stuff. And they're like, all right, we need to kind of get a grip on this at some point. And so they finally codified the colors in 1929 and the size and shape of the sea in 64. And I think they almost nailed it. I think they almost it was pretty close. Yeah, exactly right. But like, I mean, as you know, because we've talked about it in the discord, like what's the one thing that you would if you could? And I don't even know how to explain this over an audio medium. Um, <laughs> if you could, let me let me try. Um, yeah. If you take the state of Colorado flag and only look at the white layer, if you're like doing Photoshop or whatever, it's not just a white stripe with a circle missing out of it. it. There is a weird keystone shape to the white on the right side of the flag where it meets the red and uh, gold circles. Um, it yeah. just looks jagged. It's uh, uh, from the point of a seamstress unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. This is a lot of work. Why are we doing this? Why can't we just simplify this just a little bit exactly have the so. line go directly like feed directly into yeah. the other line and as you said the word keystone that is reserved for pennsylvania so you can't have that shit in Cal yeah, colorado right? anyway so yeah get that miles away <laughs> but no yeah the colorado flag and i know i'm going to go over it in a, an upcoming episode like in in probably less detail as well but to me it is one of the most like marketable flags like i said one of the first things i did when i got there was get a shirt, get like a hat. I actually, I have a hat as well, <laughs> uh, like a baseball cap with that design on it in, you know, an abstract. And, and I think like that abstract really speaks to key parts of flag design, like where if you can take like just the C part or whatever, and the, you know, the disc in the middle and put it on something that's completely different and people still recognize it, that's <laughs> another part of what makes up a good flag other than just like, a kid could draw it. It's only got this many colors and you know, all that stuff. So Colorado is like, for me, it's top, it's top five for sure. I don't know the exact order I'd put them all in, but yeah. I want to say consistently, uh, New Mexico gets the number one spot. New Mexico when... does get a lot of number ones. Yeah. Yeah. I, I own that one as well. Shout out to Nick from episode one and I don't know, five, I think, <laughs> uh, he went there and got me one of them, but yeah, I, I do have a Colorado as well. Um, but yeah, just that one little thing with the C has always like pissed me off about it. <laughs> it's like, I shouldn't care, but, and I didn't used to care, but then I started doing a show about flags <laughs> and yeah, you'd be amazed what little, like from a design standpoint, you're like, uh Oh, what have you done here? Nitpicky things yeah. you get into. Yeah, exactly. Jumping back ever so slightly, um, the small C, uh, original design before the sixties, before the size regulations. Um, I th think gateway park when they took down the city of denver and the city of aurora flags to put colorado flags up they bought flags from some questionable source i would imagine and it was a small c flag it was like og and they were flying those 
And I'm sure people got mad on the way to the airport, like, this is not the Colorado flag. <laughs> Dude, it's amazing, like, the things that... <laughs> it's a like, different I life. noticed it. I knew very few people probably did, but <laughs> I was like, that's not right. Why is it yeah. not right? Oh, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah. But it's just amazing, like, the things that, like, government agencies will do to save, like, a literal buck. Like, it could not have been that much more to get a real one from, like, a reputable, <laughs> like, you know, flag designer, seller, whatever, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't. This we're was not screen get printed that, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Side tracks are. Like, it's just it's it's nasty. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I absolutely love the Colorado flag. I love the Denver one to a somewhat lesser extent. Both are emojis in our Discord. If you want to join as a listener. Oh, you added a Denver one. Awesome. Yeah, I got the Denver one in there now. Um. But yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to um, another one that is painted on your liveries. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So livery. one of the 12 yep. states, livery. Yep. Liveries is plural. That's correct. You know what? Honestly, I've got notes on a lot of these. I am going to pick one at random. Um, hmm. <laughs> All right. We're going to go over. Actually, no, 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 no. I can't tell you. That's cheating. I All right, just do I need to, to describe it, or are you going to describe it to me? Give away the whole thing. No, 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 no. You describe this one. Okay. You, given that you fly with it, probably know that, what this one is, but yeah. I saw this one just the other day. Blue field, but it's not the state seal, or is it? Is that the state seal of this particular state? So it would suggest that the state bird of this state is a pelican. The adult pelican in the center of the blue field is feeding. Let me zoom that in. <laughs> yeah, is zoom the, it is in. The gets... Is the pelican bleeding? There are three like teardrop shaped drops of something coming from the adult pelican's chest, but it is feeding three younger pelicans in a nest of French fries. There is a white banner underneath it says Union Justice Confidence. That is that flag of Louisiana. I didn't even have to ask. You had that one queued up, as I suspected. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah, it's okay. So you brought up a very interesting point. Well, first off, yes. The you, French fries? You nailed the design. Well, that too. <laughs> you nailed the design. It is, yeah, a mama pelican, three baby pelicans, and a French fry nest at the bottom. You got the banner that says the state motto. This is not exactly the state seal, but it's not too far off. And then... Yeah, most importantly, the the three teardrop shaped drops of blood that I never noticed before. I wonder if that's even on the flag. I was I going to it. ask if it was on the plane flag. On the flag, yeah. Yeah, the plague. Look here, the plague. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Let me know because um, I am curious about that because. The three drops of blood on the pelican's chest are actually a pretty important design on this flag. Like they're an intentional choice. They've been legislated more than once. And, uh, you know, they have, they have their own symbolism, basically, to put it shortly. Oh, yes, I am seeing the three drops. They're kind of on the bottom of the flag here. Let me see if I can copy this over to you. But you uh, never noticed the them bottom. I never noticed them until now. Looking... I have looked at, not the plane, obviously, but the Louisiana flag. <laughs> not a million times, but hundreds. And never, never noticed this. Even though it is literally like if you put, you know, if you line it up. I'm pretty sure it is the exact midpoint of this flag. Which is the very bottom of the fuselage of this aircraft. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So it's I like, can see him. Yeah. See how it's coming out of the beak, though? It's like the, the proportions and scaling is a little bit off from the original flag, but they are yeah. there. The, the three drops are there. So A little bit, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, this one is very interesting to me because there's a lot that they tried to hide in here, some of which, in my opinion, works some of which less so, but do you, you personally, Brandon, see anything, any other symbol when you look at the, I'll say the shape of the pelican on this flag? Um, the wings are kind of in, you know, this is an audio podcast. Yeah. Um, put that to words, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a Dracula cape. I don't know. It looks like, you know, if you, the head out of the way, it's the uh, mountains, maybe, Appalachian. Where, where is Louisiana? No, that's a little bit further south. I'm so bad at geography. Uh, <laughs> looks, yeah, like uh, 
the wings are kind of surrounding its young uh, in a protective manner. Sure, kind of yeah. Like up and, you know, heightened shoulders. Those aren't mm-hmm. shoulders. Those are elbows. Uh, I don't know anatomy either. Uh, yeah. Kind of bird anatomy. Who knows? They're just in really... Uh, Ornithologist. Ac- acute. Yeah. <laughs> acute uh, angles. Um, kind of like in the shape of an M. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess like more, the hem, yeah. more than anything, if you don't include the head, it looks like an M. It is supposed to look like, are you familiar with the fleur de lis? The fleur de lis, yes. That, uh, the, the saints, who dat, right? Uh, football terms. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, if you give me a second, I've even got one. A saint's flag or a French flag? No, various <laughs> French de flags of which there's, yep, there's so that's one. an animal representation of the fleur de lis. That looks... That makes sense. I see. Yeah. It. So it's supposed to be that. And I, I, I get it. I would not have come to that conclusion on my own. I don't think though. No, I don't think and I've there, ever there are, seen that where I not told. There are the three, I don't know what to call them out, uh, on the end of the fleur de lis that could be the three pelicans in the nest there. Kind of a mirroring symbolism. I'll throw, hold that up again. Very well could be. <laughs> I honestly don't know if it's supposed to be. See how it's in like a, yeah, the three that come the, down. The three at the pattern. Bottom. Yeah, the three that go yeah. out and the three that come out and down. Yes. Yeah. Words. In any case, <laughs> it's supposed to look like a fleur de lis, which obviously has like you know, I mean, like you said, it's on the same. It's a helmet. stretch. Yeah. Well, yeah, for this, it's a stretch, in my opinion, anyway. But yeah, like you said, it, it's definitely like baked into the fabric of like Louisiana culture. Like it's on the Saints helmet. Um, you know, like you go to Mardi Gras, you're gonna see it all over the place. You see it on like street signs, all that stuff. So there's a history there, but they were trying to get, uh, you can judge whether they succeeded or not. They were trying to make the Pelican look like that. And they went through like a few iterations of it. Um, I'm not going to send you all the old ones. I'll send you one of the older ones. That what year right. is the current one circa? So, yeah. The current one was codified in 2010. Oh, that recent. Yes. Okay. But, the this main one that you posted is yeah, a the... 1995 MS Paint. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, this one looks like garbage. That's less um, and less the, the fleur de lis than the first one. Yeah. But, you know, that was used from 1912 to 2006. Wow. All and right. then the only difference, actually, here, I'll give you the one that was from 2006 to 2010. You tell me the difference. The presence of the three drops exactly and that's what we're going to go into the red on the flag yeah Uh uh-huh so the mother pelican is supposed to be it's called anyway a pelican in her piety i think like the pieta which is like kind of a like mother religious type i don't i'm not religious but it's something something like that in art it's uh, like michelangelo carved the pieta which is i think the mother mary holding the adult christ child Okay. Like after okay. he's crucified, it's that, that's what that Pieta, when you say that, that's what comes to mind for me. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, it's like a motherly love, or like in this sense, anyway, it's like a motherly love toward, yeah, exactly. Um, the weird thing is with these blood drops, it, it was always like traditional to have them on the flag, but it wasn't codified. And okay. from, from what I've read, it says like, like in later years, like I'm guessing like the latter half of the 20th century or so. You know, school children, we talk about like school children being able to like reproduce these flags and things. It was haphazardly followed that there should be these blood drops right there. Uh, like half of the flags didn't have them, half of them did. So there wasn't really any like standardization, which is kind of a problem when you have a what should be a standard safe flag. And so it wasn't until somebody, an eighth grader uh, at a Catholic high school in Huma, Louisiana, brought it up to his state legislator and said, Hey, like, what is our state flag? Cause like, I know it's generally this, but (laughs) is there blood? Is there not blood? Like, what what are we doing here? And so finally in 2006, the Louisiana state legislature passed a law, which specified that three drops of blood, one for each chick, I guess you call them. uh, I don't know with one for each baby bird. Hatchlings. Hatchling. Sure. (laughs) Uh, Um, were to be depicted like kind of on the chest because the whole point of the flag is that it's feeding the the hatchlings with its own blood, which weird, but that is like kind of the whole point. 
So when you take that out of the flag, I mean, to you and me, it looks like a normal pelican feeding in a normal way. But to a Louisianan, it's sacrilege. <laughs> There's Where the fuck's the blood? <laughs> These are vampire babies. They need their blood. <laughs> and so, yeah, but it, it wasn't until 2010 that the current flag was revealed at a swearing in ceremony. And then the state official said that the current design was now required by the 2006 law, just four years earlier. And then they, that's when they brought in the more detailed Pelican too. Cause they kind of were like, eh, if we're already redesigning, let's make this look a little nicer too. And it does look nicer than the previous iteration. For it sure. looks ultimately nicer. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the old one, like you said, is kind of MS paint. I mean, we say it yeah. a lot on this show, but it legit looks like just some copy. Something paste. about the, the line That's stroke it. that, yeah, the black, like drawn with a Sharpie look to it. It's not great. It, not great. Yeah. It's not great. But the, uh, the new one looks like it's, uh, I don't know, it has a Victorian aesthetic to it, like, um, turn of the century, um, art that you see, like, in, like wildlife books of those days, you know, yeah, like, no, I, I, I could, think of like archaeological stuff. And I could definitely see that. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks classical, like more, I don't know, friendlier to the eye for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think even like the tone of blue, like every, every single part about it is better. It's not a state with a seal blue. It's a little bit like um, more muted because it has a kind of a white tint to it. Yeah, it, it does remaining dark. Yeah, I was gonna say it doesn't get full marks for me because it is like, like you know, seal on a bed sheet adjacent. <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's it's better than that. I'll say it's better than like New York and New Jersey, Massachusetts. Like it's better than a, a bunch of state flags. But that still only puts it middle of the pack or so. But yes. Anyway, yeah, I thought that one was super interesting because like I, I just had never seen the drops of blood before, and you work next you to planes. You introduced that, have that it. to me today. Yes, I, I did not say, see that until today. Under that part of the plane, not a whole lot, but a certain amount. No. Or no, no, I'm usually like you know, if you see the aircraft door there at the. Oh, okay, I'm, okay. I'm okay. I'm right there, which I don't know if you see in that picture of the plane. Uh, next to every aircraft door since 2014 on has the Southwest logo. Um, yeah, the and they like the tap yeah. it when they go in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like yeah, the Notre Dame like football game. Yeah, good luck. Yep. Good luck playing. You got this. Oh yeah, we had shit, we had the Rock at my high school and just like rub that for good luck and all that shit. <laughs> Enough people do it, it just disintegrates into nothingness. But probably not the same thing with the heart. <laughs> um, it's pretty good aircraft paint. Doesn't chip off easy. Either. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it should be as many layers as they say they do on it. Oh, yeah. But anyway, that's Louisiana. So we've gone, we went Denver, Colorado, Louisiana. You got anything else to say on that one? or? Um, nope. That Other than I learned something no today. No notes. Yeah. I figure, should I keep skipping around or should I get to something? All right, let's get to this one. I wanted to get to Missouri. Which I apparently took no physical notes on, but I trust me, I've got a lot of it up here. <laughs> <laughs> My note taking this week was a little spotty, but um, I've got a lot up in the old noggin. So, so yeah, I'll go ahead and drop that one into the chat. And I already gave away what it was, but if you could, uh, what we you have know, here is the describe it. <laughs> state flag of Missouri, and that's the end of the description. Okay, uh, tricolor flag, uh, horizontal stripes of red, white blue in that order i think netherlands um yeah netherlands flag with a looks like a state seal type design in the middle don't know if this is truly the missouri state seal but it has uh two bears that are standing upright holding a gold circle shield type thing it looks like that has a helmet of a knight on it and green branches permeating from the top there there's a gold banner. Let me zoom in. Text Salus Populi Suprema Lex Exto. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you took Latin. Latin. I uh, no, I took choir, and you learned uh, how to sing Latin. <laughs> yep. I don't know what it means. I can say it. Uh, uh, I think I get the gist of it. I, it's something about like the like public welfare is the the highest law of the land or something. Yeah. So populus is like yep. Yeah. yeah. This isn't a Latin podcast, but all right. <laughs> United we it stand. It is now. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> On that shield that the bears are holding, it's uh, divided into three parts. Um, so 
a line down the middle. On the left side, it's divided into what would be, would be quadrants. So upper left quadrant is blue with a white crescent moon with the tips pointing upward. The bottom left quadrant of the circle is red and a white bear, maybe of the same kind of bear that's holding the shield itself. And in the, I'm searching for words, um, half circle. There's a better eh, word the, for that. The right half. Right half. Of, no, there's like a semi, semi, a semicircle. That's there it is. Ah, yeah. Semicircle on the right. Um, looks like it has the state seal, not state seal, the seal of the United States of America or yeah, something similar yeah. to it. It is the bald eagle holding uh, all the branches and arrows. Uh, stars and stripes on its belly and etc cetera, etc cetera. um yeah yeah that's exactly it how many stars are in the circle did you count them there are 20 what is it 24 yeah 24 because it was the 24th state admitted okay that was going to be my next question so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah most of the states that have more than like you know, three or four flags like or three or four stars. That's the reason. Like Tennessee's old one didn't even bother with 16 stars. It was just like the number 16. And uh let's just settle on three. There we yeah. Go. We'll go with the three grand divisions, which are kind of like made up, but whatever. Um but yeah, no, Missouri State flag, I would argue, uh I'd say definitely worse than Colorado's, but better than Louisiana's, in my opinion. Although, actually, I don't know if it's better than Louisiana's, in my opinion. What is my opinion? Shit. <laughs> I think That's I why like people Louisiana's better. Yeah. That, I, think yeah. I, I think I like Louisiana's better, too. <laughs> yeah, so that was just a bald-faced lie, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I like Louisiana better overall. I don't know. There's something about, like, um, I mean, this one does have more colors in it. Not that that's always like, in there's fact, a, actually, uh, strictly speaking, that's not a good thing. Yeah, there's a different blue in the sky that's above the bears. That's like a little bit of a lighter blue. How many stars are in that? Yeah. One? Is, that is that also the 24 stars? Uh, no, so that yeah. has 37. Um, <laughs> so there's 61 total. Okay. You know why 37? Um, I was a Kevin Smith fan um, back in the 90s from the movie Clerks. We won't get into that. Uh, 37, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you don't know? I was hoping you knew, because I have no idea. I do not know. Uh, okay. Well, guess we're not finding out. <laughs> in a row? No, they're in a circle. Yeah, no, I... I... Yeah, no, I legitimately don't know why there are 37. <laughs> but yeah, no, 37, I was I was hoping you knew why. That... Is that 37 in the circle or in the sky? It's 37 about... in the little, like, uh, lighter blue sky part. The got circle's it. got 24. Which is an optical illusion because it looks like there's more stars around the circle than there are in the sky. There, that's interesting. How it, it does fits your mind, yeah. And there's one star that's bigger than the other ones, like at the very top of the, the crown helmet thing. What an yeah, interesting it's, flag. It's it's not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. What are the choices? Love or um, hate it, I guess necessarily. And the the Roman numeral at the bottom, M D C C C X X. So that's 320 at the end. What's M? M was 1,000. D? What is D in the Roman numerals? <laughs> I don't remember D. I remember L. D is 500. So D it's 1820, I think. 15, 67, 18, 20. Okay. And that's the year. The Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes Took sense. Took a long time to, to get there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only thing that makes sense on this flag. And yeah, it's, I, I don't know exactly what's up with the stars, but overall, I don't hate this one. Like I said, middle of the pack as far as state flags, but there's a lot going on. How does it like, I'm, I'm curious how it looks on the plane, because this is the most involved one that we've gone over for sure. Well, uh, the way that's on the plane, I think they had to adjust the, the, they had to adjust the design a little bit to make it clear on the plane. Um, I thought, yeah, I, I the, would imagine, <laughs> I thought the Missouri flag was two sided because this fl flag design on the plane is in two sides. It's on one side, it says, um, united we stand. The other side, it says divided we fall. So like, depending on which side of the aircraft you're on, the seal says different. I think they, just because of the size of the text, they wanted it to still translate and say, 
yeah be, be, be true to it yeah yeah um i sent a picture of my own photograph of the plane from the ramp level um of that united states seal on the they have put it on the engine of the aircraft they... yeah i assume you don't mind me putting this in the show notes oh no yeah you wouldn't send it to me okay cool absolutely yeah no this is yeah the, the, okay so i can see like in the background it's just like this must be the divided we fall side that's the divided we fall flat side that's the side that like um the ramp sees when they're loading bags i guess that's uh considered like the first officer side the number two side uh number one side the the part where i see because i drive up the jet bridge to the aircraft door i see the united we stand and i remember seeing it um uh, on the other side on either a camera or like ta taxiing by and i was like wait a second that's not the same and i thought until like pretty recently that missouri uh, state flag was two-sided and they just put it up on the plane as it was but no it's just a one-sided flag yeah there are th currently yeah. anyway no no two-sided flags in the u.s there have been historically but oh really yeah not not to my knowledge currently though so yeah it, it would be i mean i don't hate it as an idea it's it's a little harder when you're i don't know getting into anything that isn't <laughs> painting a plane i guess but yeah this is another one that was uh that was designed basically due to a dar like daughters of the american revolution uh you know committee or or contest or what i don't think this one was necessarily a contest but they kind of appointed someone so and it was it was let me see it was 1913 that this one was you know codified and everything and for reference, this... that, that other one was, what, 1910, I believe, the Colorado one? So it's kind of in that same era. Was this one replacing a flag or um, introducing a flag? Did it have a flag to begin with? It was, so... technically speaking, it was introducing a flag. There had been a unofficial state flag that started around the start of the Civil War that looked like this that I'm sending to you now. Uh it's simpler okay. in that it has only one color they just used one. gold for all the color elements that we see in the uh missouri state seal yeah Blue background again hey yeah religion. exactly <laughs> so so that's like that's the part that i wanted to go into because like i'll just read this like almost verbatim but like uh it, it was designed as such in cave Girardeau, missouri by marie elizabeth oliver uh the wife of a former state senator and yeah, she was a volunteer with the DAR. She kind of started it in 1908. And, th and this is, uh, I'm speaking now of the current one, not this one that I sent you last, but. Okay. Scrolling um, up. but it says that like for, for she wanted to like get it right. It sounds like. And so she researched state flags extensively, but you have to think like she's researching state flags in 1908 before Tennessee has changed its flag to what it is now. Um, before, you know, California is probably standardized theirs. Like I couldn't swear to that, but like before a lot of the state flags that we now know, and at least some of them love, uh, you know, kind of came into their, you know, final form, if you will. And so she's researching state flags and she's like getting with like all these other like flag designers from these other states and saying like, Hey, like historically, how did your flag come to come to be? Uh, how did this design come up? And you have to imagine that most of them are telling her, oh, well, we had this blue, right? And then we had a state seal and we just slapped it right on there. <laughs> and so, well, like, these are the people that are in her head about flag design. Again, she's not a flag designer or, you know, whatever the 1910 version of a uh, graphic designer is like, I guess still a graphic designer, really. But like, she's not that by trade, but she's getting all these people in her ear telling her, yeah, just throw that on a blue background. To her credit, because we're talking about the current Missouri flag and not the old one, she doesn't quite do the blue background. She does do the seal. She throws it in the middle with the stars for, her, you know, what number state it was. But then she inexplicably puts it on what's basically a Dutch flag. <laughs> I don't even think these are the exact red, white, and blues from the U.S. flag because the red looks more crimson or, like, dark to me. It looks darker, yes. Yeah, okay. But that's that's how this one comes along. It's originally designed as a painted paper flag, which then I think like three years later gets destroyed. Yeah. Three years later in 1911. So this was 1908. She designs it three years later in 1911, the Missouri state Capitol burns. I didn't look up details on that. I, I don't know if that was our only like, copy of the flag. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh and so that was gone so then yeah she sewed one which hey you know good idea from the jump really but and um yeah it was adopted in 1913 officially so about five years after she kind of started doing it and the governor signs it into law uh and it is one of the few that has remained unchanged to this day because like i said you know the colorado one they had to go in and codify the colors or this tennessee changed theirs in the early 20s like a lot of times it's just like color or like specificity on design Theirs has remained unchanged since... Since 1915, you said? 1913. 1913. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it was displayed in the Capitol till... The silk one that she actually did herself, it was displayed in the Capitol till it started to deteriorate because, of course, it's fabric. And then, uh, yeah, my favorite part is... And this guy's still in office. Uh, but in 1988, Secretary then Secretary of State Roy Blunt, who is now a, I think, senator from Missouri, issued a challenge to elementary school students to raise money to restore that flag, which to me ca- encapsulates like America perfectly. It's like there's like a state senator and he's like, hey, kids, you should do this or find a way to pay for this. <laughs> Captain delegation. Yes. Yeah. I know I'm a member of the state government at the time. But you know what? It'll teach you guys some uh, some moxie or whatever. I don't know what the reasoning is there. But anyway, that's the Missouri state flag. And uh, it's, yeah, you know, it's a flag. <laughs> Are the bears fighting or getting along? Getting along they... Supposedly getting along, although I could make a case either way. I always, when I see the plane rolling in, it's the bear flight plane. Bear fight plane. Yeah, like in your head. Oh, no, they're, they're anyway, getting along. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, yeah, it's got the the state seal, which is slightly different than the coat of arms in ways that aren't important enough to discuss here, really. But, like, I mean, you can see kind of the difference between the old one and the new one. It's just, like, a difference of, like, coloring and, like... Yeah, as, one as color as opposed to, that. like, how yeah. many colors? Like, seven colors there. Yeah. yeah. Overall, uh, I think, like, Nava did a survey a few years ago that generally ranks this one, like lower middle of the pack if that makes sense it's it's very middle of the pack but on the lower end it's ahead of most of the ones that are just like seal <laughs> on a bed sheet it's yeah an upgrade from the blue background because at least so they got a fancy above bed all sheet. those yeah you know that's like honestly half the battle as far as i'm concerned the dutch bed sheet mm-hmm. it yeah. mm-hmm. all right <laughs> and yeah that's missouri do you think um should we go over one more yeah we can do one more all right, we'll we can do, do all one of them. More. We can do all twelve. <laughs> I only had two more, and I'm debating which one. I think let's go over. Let's go over this one. Let's go over. Oh, I'm not going to say it this time. All right. Ah, are you going to are you going to describe it or? Uh... No, you know what I just realized though. I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> okay. Like like I normally do, but what <laughs> I just realized is that it literally says the name of the state on it, so there's not going to be any guessing involved. I don't have a Kansas one in the southwest. and you'd be surprised how many have the state name on them it's this bad boy so if you could briefly probably won't take you long on this one but go ahead and uh yeah describe and then you know guess (laughs) it is a uh blue field um in the upper right two-thirds of both i guess yeah it's not a perfect quadrant division there um it has a um sundance film festival type plant <laughs> formation on the bottom <laughs> with yellow flowers there is a similar to the lone star state it's just one star in the center of that quadrant yeah golden banner at the top says battle born and underneath that star it has the state's name yeah give a chance for the listeners to guess and yeah. it's the state of Nevada. <laughs> I was going to say the only like that you'd get tipped off by the Battleborn, but that's about it. Um, it is, in fact, the state of you say Nevada. I say Nevada. Um, I, say Nevada. I also say Colorado. Let's call the whole thing off. Do you say Colorado or Colorado? I say Colorado. That's kind of a, a I, I, that's offensive. Not offensive. It's like, <laughs> oh, you're not from here. Yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I'm yep. not. <laughs> So totally fair. Only thing Nevada. I would point out. I guess they don't like it being called Nevada. My dad though. says Nevada, and he's from Ohio, so I don't get like uh, whatever. 
only thing I would, I think you said top right and meant to say top left. As I meant to say top left, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, all this stuff. But yeah, the the little, you know, twigs, they almost look like the Roman, like if the listener can picture, <laughs> like the Roman, like laurel leaves that are kind of like under or around, you know, initials or things like the Fred Perry logo or whatever. I it's, said, yeah, Sundance Film Festival. It's like yeah, yeah, or Sundance. La- laurel leaves kind of ornate decorative on the bottom yeah this one has yellow flowers though the yellow flowers these, aren't the same these are sagebrush sage okay which i'm not sure you might have that in colorado as we well. have sage yeah i figured some in my front yard yeah mm-hmm. oh i meant to mention and this will i'm not even going to edit this in at a spot where it makes sense but the third meaning of c behind colorado and centennial is columbine which is your state flower that is the state flower yep yep and uh the state and song, no other the, meaning yeah <laughs> remember everyone in third grade had to do colorado history and the state song is the land where the columbines grow and oh yeah it's nice. one of those earworms that i wish i hadn't have brought up because now it's going to be in my head the rest of it the- <laughs> sorry i shouldn't have gone on that tangent i just <laughs> no, wanted to fine. somehow get that in there that ah, this show's sometimes a mess but <laughs> we edit it <laughs> anyway. and i'm glad because i'm like pausing a lot i'm like oh, i'm still <laughs> i'm still nervous because it's funny because i'm listening to the show and i'm like Oh yeah, I'm just listening to a podcast that I listen to. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm in this show. I should <laughs> wait, probably be contributing. Actively, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do what? All I'm right. learning so much about flags. Yeah. And back to you. I'm like, what? <laughs> and back to you, Andy. Um Yeah, no, this this the Nevada one's not um terrible to me. It's not good. I I kind of like I have a mixed relationship with it. I I kind of like that they've moved the and this is not even the state seal, as far as I know. Um, but they've moved the like emblem up to the canton. I was just going to say yes. It's uh, not it, right dead in the center of the flag, like it is in all the other states. So because it, yeah, it's just it so has hard one to up tell on one that. from another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any guesses? Do you know what the battleborn signifies? Um, trying to remember American history class. Gonna say from if I over hear, twenty years ago, <laughs> if I hear a keyboard clack in. You're disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> My Google Google. Uh, not how this works. <laughs> Battleborn. Uh, well, um, Civil know, War era, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that's the the state came into existence during the Civil War, and so that's hence the Battleborn like banner that kind of flies above the star. Uh, was that there. like 1860? thereabouts or it was um, the war ended in 65 66 i think it was 62 or 61 to 65 i know it ended in 65 but okay so so it's right in the middle of that nevada becomes a state got it yeah but interestingly like they don't have a flag for like the, this battleborn flag doesn't come from when they were born in battle it comes from uh 90 hindsight is 2020 <laughs> on this flag yeah <laughs> yeah i mean there was i think there was a battleborn flag in like you know, 1929, but it was a little bit different. I'll send you that one too. Um, the main like points of interest on this one, other than just the fact that it's a little bit different and that it moves that, like I said, up to the, uh, the Canton is that it's another one that was not codified for a long time. And it seems like the more I research us states and like actually having your flags codified and like, you know, set out and everything, we're not good at that, or we were not good at that, at least in the early 1900s or before, especially not before. This one looks clunky. This one's very clunky. <laughs> like, do the, you want to uh, explain the difference? Yeah, so the, the main difference is it still has the laurels and the banner and the star in the center, but the word Nevada is broken up into uh, six parts, because that's how many letters are in <laughs> the word Nevada. Um Yeah. Uh, looks like it is going clockwise. I was like, Nae Dev. Nope, Nevada. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are they doing? What are they trying to do here? And yeah, eagle eared listeners will notice that, like you said, Nevada has six letters. A flag generally, or a star generally has like five, has five points. To put yeah. them. <laughs> this is really close. So yeah, they put the N on the point and then the rest of them in the little, like, you know, counterpoint or whatever it's called. Uh, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, like, yeah, in the little niche there. And yeah, it's, it's a fucking mess. But. It's yeah, originally, <laughs> sorry, I don't have any like nice words. This no, way. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the wedding design was in 1926. Like we're kind of working a lot within that era today anyway. 
And it was subjected to a little bit of revision in the state legislature where uh, the Nevada like state house and state Senate could not agree on the placement of the word Nevada. <laughs> I think you and I can both agree. Oh, it's this doesn't work. No. Yeah. Please then it looks better it. <laughs> on the, the, the current one. Yeah. Not oh, absolutely. This nonsense. Yes. They reached a compromise in 1929 <laughs> And they reached the wrong compromise in 1929, that, that I should say. Not what I have gone with, yeah. <laughs> it's not even really a compromise. It's just like one side won. <laughs> like, but, um, and, and the they fact adopted... that it lasted for 60 years after that. Like, what? Are you, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fix it. They, they adopted the one that, like Brandon was saying, like has the nonsense, like clockwise ish Nevada <laughs> around it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the one my Atlas had in it when I was growing up. It, well, it might have been. It was early 90s, so maybe. And um, anyway, yeah, they reached this quote unquote compromise. But then so get this, that was 1929. Exactly like you said, 60 to the dot years later, 1989 comes around. There is a legislative researcher, which is not a position that I was familiar with. <laughs> for. It's just somebody who's like, they like, it's like, All I right, look up the law. Yeah. Yeah, you're a fucking nerd. You want to come on and like, look up like if we did anything wrong 60 years ago or something. <laughs> like, Okay, yes, sir. So they hire a legislative researcher <laughs> uh, who discovered that the bill, as sent to and signed by the governor, did not actually accurately reflect the 1929 legislative agreement. So it was just they were doing this like extra judicially, not that it, you know, it's a flag It ultimately pretty low stakes. But uh, and it was revised. <laughs> yeah, like I said. Two years after that, after they discovered the error, in 91, they started displaying the word Nevada under it, which makes sense. <laughs> you can read it. You don't have to go, you don't have to tilt your head in any direction to try to keep continuity. No, it's, yeah. yeah it's Honestly, even banner. if yeah. Nevada had five letters, <laughs> because then you wouldn't know where to start. You'd have to maybe like turn the stars. Would that be slightly. Nevda? Yeah. Yeah. Nevada. Too many, too many vowels in Nevada. If they just take out the vowel that everyone disagrees on, just Nevda. Yeah. Well, you, your state and Nevada are two, well, not the only two, but two states named after what? Spanish, like, uh, Colorado means like colored red, right? Color Basically. of red, yeah. Yeah. And then Nevada means snowy, if I'm not wrong. I'll take it, yeah. Yeah. Sierra, okay. <laughs> Sierra Nevada, that's the mountain. I'm pretty sure. There, so yeah. And then yeah. Montana is Montana, is just mon mountain. And, that's the uh, Scarface state, right? Oh, yeah, Mon yeah. Montana. Yeah, Tony Montana. <laughs> Everyone's favorite classic movie character. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's that's the uh, the flags. There's there's one we didn't quite get to, but honestly, I'll get to it on a later uh, episode because I have too much to say about this one. That I have one more thing. thing to say about Nevada. I in the background opened up like I'm I'm on uh, usflags.design. Have you been on that one? That one's a good Probably website. at some point. Um, but the very first flag of Nevada, 1905, 1915. Oh, the one that's silver and gold? It just says, silver, gold, Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> I think I we might, should go back to that one. That's, that's awesome. I might throw that in the show notes, too. That one's fun. All the stars. That's the, uh, yeah. the classic, like, you know, no words on flags, like, thing. The, like, not trope. Trope's the wrong word. But, like, almost like a rule. No words on yeah, flags. Yeah, it really should be a rule. This one is just, like, hmm. Fuck that. <laughs> Silver, this Nevada, is what we are. Gold. Silver, gold, Nevada. And not only that, I mean, I'm sending it to you even though you've already seen it, but like, not only that, but like, what's up with the font on gold and silver? Like, why are oh, the that's letters... That's different than the one I'm looking at, too. Let me oh, okay. Copy maybe I'm looking at a recreation of a handmade one or something that's... Uh... Yours looks more authentic, maybe? Uh, it could be. This one is the one that's on that website. Let me... Oh, uh, okay, okay. Get you the website as well. I mean, dude, a lot of these, it's hard to know what to, uh, okay. Yeah. There we go. US flags dot design. Yeah. I'll put that up on the show notes too. A lot of them, it, it's hard to know what to believe. The fonts as far are as, like, very the, different on these. Yeah. The recreation flags. Like, yeah. Cause it's like a lot of times, it's like we know that it was a dark blue. We don't know Pantone wise, <laughs> like what, how dark of blue is this old glory blue? Or we know this... it had this many stars, but honestly, even sometimes like, it, probably less the case with state flags but like sometimes it'll just say stars and you don't know whether they're five pointed six seven eight like 
you don't know exactly any details. Are they on it, sewn so. on? Are they bedazzled on? Are they? <laughs> I always like. Is this a, a craft project? In yeah. a vacuum, I assume bedazzled. That's my <laughs> default, but. Um, That's why there's so many different sizes. Sometimes they just like, they're not uniform across the board. Like, yeah, we've honestly, as a country, as a nation, we have got to get on top of our bedazzling. Like we've got to standardize it, get it, like you said, uniform, and like figure this out together. Because like, <laughs> there's got to be something that can bring people together in this country. And if it's not bedazzling, I don't know what it is. It's not this flag though. Fuck that. Um, <laughs> not Nevada. It's not going to start with Nevada. <laughs> yeah. Just one last dig at Nevada's flag. Um, but yeah, man, those are the ones that I had for today, including the, uh, well, I mean, all of them are ones that are on your livery, as I now know how to say. Or 100% for sure know how to say. I think you have to flip the R. It's like Scottish livery. Livery. <laughs> livery. On your livery. Oh, God. We have listeners in the UK, and they're probably going to... They're going to tear some, me apart. I'll get some messages. <laughs> oh, the... You or me, or both. <laughs> Who knows? Um, anyway, so yeah, we'll go ahead and kind of get things wrapped up there. I don't have anything else on my notes other than just the years that the planes came out. Um, some of the other planes, I talked about the Shamu plane. This was the first plane that I remember uh, when I started in 2009. When this rolled up to the gate, I was like, what is happening? Uh, it's uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend at the time. Uh, Sports Illustrated Centerfold <laughs> Swimsuit Edition. They put it on the side of a plane. Oh my god. How, what, first <laughs> off, how old is she? Hopefully uh, When the picture was taken, current. probably less than 25, I would imagine. I was going to say, it's fucking Leo. It's a rule so, of thumb, yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. And that's just like, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's not that my pic picture, it says uh, Getty Images. I don't think no, I, I have any photos of this. Yeah, Mr. Getty, but yeah. <laughs> This is, yeah, that's, like, jarring. Especially coming from the flag ones, and then it's just, like... It was only fl uh, flew around like this for, like, three like, months. Yeah. It that was very temporary. More, like, printed or, like... Um, wrapped, yeah. Wrapped, wrapped is the word, yeah. Yeah. Good lord. I hope I hope they didn't paint got this some one. good they money just for that. It. I think you have to, all their partnerships are very unique and... <laughs> What's the one, uh... A good way to put it. There's a plane wearing Beats oh, headphones. Oh, god damn it, dude. Yep. <laughs> it sure is. And yeah, man, those are the uh, those are the ones I had for us today. I know you guys fly a lot more of them, but didn't quite have time to get into all of them. Plus, a few are going to come up in subsequent episodes, so I wanted to... The different state flags, yeah. Yeah, leave, leave a few yeah. of those for later. So. And I might have said before, I don't think it's uh, Southwest's intention to have 50 planes for all 50 states. We don't certainly fly to all 50 states right now but right from what have, i saw it's, we have a it's, dozen we might have more Stay where tuned. you have markets right like yeah, yeah or yeah where you fly to but yeah man um that wraps us up for the week so is there anything that you want to plug i mean even not necessarily your own socials or you know but really anything at all now's your chance um i guess i could throw out yeah just socials um i my username is bogdoot you heard that right b-o-g-d-o-o-t uh, that's if a Sasquatch is typing his name and is using a typewriter with keys that are too small for his large hands. Um, I am okay. six foot nine, six ten with the hair. Um, I don't know if your listeners know this. This is the second week in a row that you have a person over six foot five on the podcast. So this is the Yeti pair. Eric is also a tall man. Not only did the listeners not know that, I have only seen you guys on Zoom, and I didn't know that either. And I'm sitting on a bouncy chair right now, so you cannot see I my am full a, stature. Yeah. I am a paltry six foot even, and so uh, I think of myself as, eh. But yeah, you guys, all right, great. Got a pair of giants the last two weeks, so that's cool. Bog Dude, you're at Bog Dude on all the socials. On Twitter, uh, Instagram, I'll just do my link tree. i just been updating that. That's a uh, whoop. Link tree slash Bogdoot. So it's link tr dot e e, I guess is the URL. Slash Bogdoot, or to, is there a dot com? There's no dot, it's a dot e e, which is weird. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I threw the link in the show notes there, or in the in the chat for the show in notes. In our notes, yep. <laughs> for the show I'll notes. try to dig up my old SoundCloud or whatever. Yeah, we'll 
Yeah, I'll make it exciting. Yeah, I'll link Here's to this like, podcast on that. On that, yeah, I don't think it's ever been visited. So some yeah, some <laughs> flag plane based raps or something that you got on there. Yeah, very exciting. Um, don't expect that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, as far as our socials go, you guys, as listeners, probably know most of them at this point, unless you're new. In which case, it is at flagged the number four content on Twitter and Instagram. My personal is at Darth Plato, spelled like it sounds. No underscores, no hyphens, none of that nonsense. And yeah, go to flagged.rocks for all of our other kind of socials and social adjacent things. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So, Brandon, I've been having trouble the last, God, I don't know, since the show started, to be totally honest. With signing off, I have yet (laughs) to really find like a good like one that's going to stick so i've been asking my guests if you have any kind of way flag related not flag related that i could sign off from this thing if there's anything you can think of let me know it's hard because i think the the my favorite ones that thus far in this uh string of episodes uh has been the last most recent one with get flagged that was just perfect and (laughs) props to eric on that one (laughs) hold on let's do one in unison (laughs) <laughs> on three on it's uh, not going to match up you're going to you're going to have to time through fuck it, it. <laughs> fuck it. I'll, I'll time it up one get, get flagged. flagged hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> dude hey whether i can edit that down or not i appreciate it there's gonna and be some I awesome zoom you. echoes it's gonna be great yeah get, 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 <laughs> flag, 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 flag. no yeah and um yeah whether i can work that out or not whatever but i appreciate it and i appreciate having you on this was a lot of fun thanks for having me it's it's cool having somebody in like a different industry and everything like that so um if you'll come back at some point we'd love to have you back so sure yeah let me know all right man well like we said fuck (laughs) shit get Get flagged flagged. take it easy y'all get flags get flagged get flagged flagged for content